what I love about the continued evolution of competitive FIFA is the addition of tournaments. Last year was our first ever E-Champions League, and this year we have something very special. Uh, it's the Copa E Libertadores. Yes, it's happening. The biggest tournament in football in South America is going to have its own E version. It's the Call Me Bowl E Libertadores, and I think we're all very excited to uh, get it done. Here, here are all the, the fun facts, I'd like to say. Registration is December 6th. And then you can have preliminary qualifiers. That's for non-FUT verified players. And then the next month, the qualifiers will include FUT verified players before the grand final in Brazil, March 7th to the 8th. There are 450 Global Series points uh, up for this and a $100,000 prize pool. It's going to be broadcast in Portuguese, Spanish, and English. So we have really a uh, pretty cool tournament. My favorite thing about that is the non-verified players being able to give you, they have the opportunity to qualify themselves as well. Because not everyone can go 27-0 and in Weekend League. Not everyone can have the time to play Weekend League as well but we still might have some gems out there in South America, et cetera, that will be able to compete and show us what they're made of. And having a competition in that part of the world as well, like we make them travel to the other ends of the earth, like on a weekly basis almost, for those guys to have a competition so big uh, in their area as well, I'm sure it will mean a lot to them. All right, well, we had our Kyle Walker talk to some of the top South American players that were here in Bucharest about this tournament. The Copa Libertadores, some would say the biggest football tournament on the planet. And right here in Bucharest, we've got so many FIFA players from South America, 11 from Brazil, which is the most represented country here at Foot Champions Cup Stage 2. So I thought, let's get out, let's speak to them, and let's see just how big the Copa Libertadores actually is. How big is the Copa Libertadores? It's really big, and uh, it will be an honor for us to play it. What word comes to your mind when I say the Copa Libertadores? Mm, the big atmosphere, actually. Libertadores is really uh, rivality, a lot of rivality. So Brazilian play against Argentina and Colombia will be insane. Why do the fans get so passionate when this tournament comes around? I don't know. I think like South American people really like football. We have all these problems, all these issues in your country that will like let like forgot all of that in the, the stadium. So. I think that's it, that's how, how emotional it is for us. From South America, maybe the football is like, you know, uh, all teams, all people, all fans are so special. I don't know why, but it's, it's strange. And in some ways, I feel like they're underselling how big this tournament is to South Americans. The final is actually taking place, the real final, uh, River Plate taking on Flamengo, leg one is uh, this weekend. But it is massive. It means a ton. It's the oldest club competition in the world. It, it predates anybody else. And it has a lot of power and magnitude. And, and it matters to people in South America. So I'm very excited to have the E League of the Doors involved. I mean, Iago's quote there was just the best. Football is life over in South America. I think what he said there was just great. But yeah, Kyle spoke to a couple of you know, great players that we've seen so far. And there's so many that are going to be around. And we're going to pick a few. Yeah, I'm I want to hear which, which players are you excited to see? I'm going to go with who Kyle spoke to first then, Walter Filzer. Like, mm. okay, he hasn't had the best tournament so far, but we know he's had some problems. Uh, his coach, Thomas, is unable to be here. And I'm going to put his kind of lack of form down to that. But then we can't really be lack of form because he lost to Harry, who we just saw. So obviously he was the, here he is here. He was the cross console runner up last time. He was the first Brazilian pay, player to sign for an E-Premier League club, which is obviously Wolves. Uh, Wolves being the Premier League still, which is a great feat for them. But yeah, well, um, Wolves and Fields are there. Uh, he's got everything in his game as well. He's kind of really um, improved. His coach has said, you know, you, you're great at attacking in FIFA 19. You've got to work on your defence going forward in FIFA 20. And that's what he seems to have done. So he, he comes to the Brazilian side of things. And then I'm going to go with Argentina as well. And Nicolas, sorry, I'm taking you. No, a big boy there. Taking some pretty big, I'm taking players. the big, the big time uh, Nicolas, who dominated uh, PS4 side of things pretty much all season last season. He was back-to-back um, -back playoff final in, I think it was FIFA 18 and FIFA 19. Um, he was cross-console runner-up in many a foot champions club, I think three or four now to his name. Um, he joined up with one of our own, one of our British guys, Tex, in the FIFA Club World Cup, and he won that. But this guy has just got so many trophies already in his cabinet, going to go and probably do the Copa Libertadores and one of the biggest competitions that they could do in South America. He will want that for sure. He hasn't been here. This, yeah, there's something uh, about winning one of these competitions for the first time. Yeah, once right? NYC Chris won the first E Champions League. You can never, they can never be taken away from you, and I think that's a really big deal. Yeah, well, amazing. you're going for the statistical players. I'll go for those players who bring the passion. And you say oh, yeah. this tournament is about the passion. How could you have a tournament without Spider Kong? 
I mean, we saw what happened last event when he was able to get into that Masters place, when he was able to get top four. Okay, he didn't have the tournament he would have liked at this event. A, he has the best name in the game. Spider Kong <laughs> is literally the best thing sure. I could ever say in commentary. But also what he provides in game and out of game. Mm. I love character, I love enthusiasm, I love passion. And I think that's going to really add to a tournament like this, as well as, of course, his FIFA ability. And then if we go with, okay, let's go with an Argentinian as well, if continue to Brazilian and Argentinian. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yago, we, we heard what he said about how kind of it's about passion, it's about enthusiasm. I will never forget that moment, Yago in London when he got that victory. He, he, his headset's always falling off. <laughs> I remember him streaming with tears when he was able to get a victory as well. This was last time we was able to get into the console final. And, you know, I like that. He got French a little bit of grief for that. He got a little bit of grief for kind of uh, using Maestro's celebration, but at the same time, if you're going to dish it out, you've got to take it. And I think that Yago will be a fantastic inclusion to this tournament. I'm sure he'll be able to qualify. Okay, it'll be interesting that they are West Ham and AS Roma players, but I'm sure maybe they'll be fun. No, player. and then I probably should have made that clear at the very beginning. South American residents yep. are the only ones that can compete in this tournament. And I think that's really unique, and I think it speaks to what you said before about the non-FUT verified. It gives maybe some real underdogs a real chance to potentially compete against the very best from their, their region, their continent. So that is very cool, and we're very excited to see how the first E-League of the Doors goes down.